on the next Kelly Clarkson Show. Josh Gad, Olaf from Frozen 2. Hey, I'm Kelly and I like warm hugs. That's supposed to be my line, but go no. on. And Grace Vanderwall. Happy Thanksgiving. Yes. Plus, can you hear the bells? It's another Amber's Christmas. It's presents. I know y'all like presents. And a holiday miracle. Are you ready to meet her right now? Sisters meet for the first time. The Kelly Clarkson Show, today at 2 on NBC for New York. I chose Tulane's Executive MBA program as a means to gain skills in business law, management, finance, and value creation. Almost immediately after graduation, I was promoted to a chief judge role. Now, I am Chief Judge Tamia Gordon. Major support for Out to Lunch is provided by the law firm of Jones Walker, established in 1937 with over 375 attorneys in offices throughout the U.S., providing a comprehensive range of services to a local, national, and international client base. JonesWalker.com. And by Sharp & Associates, legal recruiters in Louisiana and Texas. And by Orange Theory Fitness, delivering fitness results for a healthier world. From Commander's Palace Restaurant in the Garden District in New Orleans, we're out to lunch with Peter Raschuti. Peter Raschuti is Tulane University's A.B. Freeman School of Business professor and director of the award-winning Birkenrode Reports. It's business, New Orleans style. Hi, I'm Peter Raschuti. Welcome to Out to Lunch. There's a lot of talk these days about artificial intelligence. Economists and pundits are betting on who among us are going to be replaced by robots and algorithms. Some say the jobs most likely to disappear are taxi, Uber, and truck drivers. Others say it's tax preparers and loan offices. As an illustration of how difficult it can be to predict how this is all going to go, you don't have to look any further than careers in photography. It was just a few short years ago that the camera and the phone were two different devices, and most of us didn't have a camera. Apart from tourists, the only people who walked around with cameras and took photos were photographers. Uh, today we're all photographers, or we think we are, although the fact is most of us don't have the creative talents to be a real photographer. That hasn't prevented even those of us in business who need a professional looking photo from using an unpaid family member with a phone instead of a professional photographer. There are a couple of areas where we still rely on professional photographers. One is the creation of art, and the other, perhaps surprisingly, is selling a house. Daryl Glade is the founder and CEO of Emoto Photo, a photographic agency that specializes in taking photos of houses for real estate sales. Daryl founded Emoto Photo here in New Orleans in 2012, and the agency now operates in 10 states. Daryl, welcome out to lunch. Hey, Peter. We invite you to the patio today. Pretty nice. It's beautiful out here. <laughs> Joshua Lee describes himself as a cultural photographer, which is somewhere between an artist and an historian. Uh, Joshua, welcome out to lunch. Thank you, Peter. Now, Daryl, I'll start with you. Uh, strangely, I would have thought if there's one thing I could possibly take a pretty good photo of myself with my iPhone, it would be my house. It's big. It doesn't move. There's plenty of light. And I can take a bunch of photos till I get a good one. But apparently, real estate ads that use professional photos sell faster and significantly closer to the asking price than listings that have amateur photos. That seems curious. It's not like people are buying houses online from photos. Almost everybody goes to the house before they make the biggest purchase of their life. What exactly is the link between a professional photo and a house sale? Professional photography helps listings sell 50% faster and 39% closer to the original asking price. And it's a pretty simple reason. If you compare professionally shot listings to listings that have a cell phone photo, they stand out more. And people actually do buy houses just through the, through the photos. They don't necessarily have to tour the home. While many of them do, uh, photos do help sell houses for out-of-town buyers, investors. And now 9 out of 10 buyers are using the internet for their search. So, of course, they're going to click on the pretty photos. And that's where your photos are going mainly? Absolutely. It's, uh, now, what about uh, if you approach a house, where, I think some people might be thinking you're taking a, just a picture of the outside of the house like we see in the newspaper. But you're doing a lot more than that. Oh, yeah. We do exterior shots, interior shots, floor plans, videos, video walkthroughs. 
virtual staging where we digitally insert furniture into an empty room. That's we'll do virtual twilight where we edit a daytime picture to make it look like a twilight picture. We do actual twilight pictures, so we have a, a, a number of products that we offer. Joshua, there's no argument from even the most enthusiastic Instagram posters that some people are better at taking photos than others. You're taking photos of cultural icons and events of Louisiana life. What you see what you choose to photograph and whatever you do to the image after you've taken it creates a work of art that 99% of us you know, couldn't make with our, our phone even on the best day. But you're selling these photos from your studio and at art markets to people who might not realize that. What is the marketing angle you have to take to turn the average cell phone wielding person into an art photography purchaser? Well, first of all, I can't get all the good pictures, so there's no, we should empower those Everybody's in, experiencing moments, everybody's seeing. And all I'm trying to do is, uh, all I do personally is chase the moments. I sort of, I'm a, a lollygagger by nature, <laughs> late for most things, which is I'd not, like to point which out is on time here. okay. Uh, listen, it was not easily done. And, uh, <laughs> but, you know, I'm notorious for being late, but that's because, you know, I'm stopped and smelled. There's, I'm easily distracted. Photography is where uh, landscape painters with ADD succeed. <laughs> <laughs> you must have photos that you think are beautiful or interesting, but don't work out as well commercially, and you must have things that you're not as crazy about that people love to buy. You that? are completely correct. Turns out there's very little correlation between great photographs and relevant images. And it goes back to moments again. It goes back to relatability. It goes back to... Um, making an image relatable. I grew up listening to music and the bands could express what I could only feel. And they got it in words. I was not good at that. But I could, but I could go, I could identify with them and then they were my words. And I got to share them. I do the same thing with images. Um, I, I, my, my booth is set up like it's my journal and these are my journal entries and people that have a relationship with Louisiana can, they're organized by categories and they can find themselves or not. Well, let's talk about that. You don't have a, uh, a retail space. How do you sell them? I, I, I'm a nomadic tent-dwelling retailer. <laughs> so I do art festivals and, and uh, music events, and um, uh, mostly around Louisiana, but I've been as far as France with it. I go to Norfolk, Virginia for a Louisiana-themed event. Every, um, I'll be going again in June. So you sell online? I'm, I'm thinking, very analog. In a, I, in a digital world, I'm very analog. We're what? so bookends. He uses, I think about, you know, I make Twilight where there isn't any. I, I, if I could do that, I would be a painter. <laughs> Photography is, to me, and this is, doesn't take anything away from what's being done there, what I'm presenting is moments. Unadulterated. You do the best you can with what you're given at the moment. You take that shot and you serve it. No one's expecting anything. I only get to share the cute ones and everything else disappears. And it's fine because they didn't know it existed anyway. <laughs> now, Daryl, <laughs> you have been, uh, you came through the Idea Village Accelerator, right? Did, did that help? Absolutely, yeah. We were there uh, 2012, I believe, 2013, somewhere in there, and uh, we learned a lot. What it basically made us do was advance much faster than perhaps we were initially planning. And so we met a lot of people, and they forced us to think about things sooner than expected. Advance is like a photography <laughs> word, so I picked that up right away. There's uh, the, uh, And you have been able to scale, and yes. scale in an interesting way. You're operating in 10 states, but they're, um, they're sort of like their own little businesses, right? Yeah, every market is completely different. Um, we're in 10, state, but 10 states, but we're probably in hundreds of individual markets in each state. And we have photographers based on the ground there. We have sales team strategically placed around the country. And every different market is different. Uh, homeowners want a different type of image. Real estate agents have different expectations. Um, but how, they, about, they, how about this big new market, Airbnb? Yes. That's got to be almost limitless for you. It is, and that's probably why we started the new company, Stilio. So the new company, Stilio, is sort of the same business, uh, business industry, real estate photography, but it's a completely different business model. So if Emoto is the platform, uh, sorry, if Emoto is the traditional pipeline business model, Stilio is the new platform network business model. So 
think of Emoto like your, your mom and dad's typical business and think of the platform network like an Amazon or a Facebook or an Airbnb even, so that we are the technology provider, Stilio is, and photographers anywhere in the country can create a real estate photography profile and agents or homeowners using Airbnb can come to the website and review all the different portfolios and prices and purchase the uh, service through the site. Just to back up, what services are you providing them? I mean, uh, the same, why are they the, attracted to you? The same services that Emoto provides is professional real estate photography and floor plans, any content that they may need to sell or rent or do short term rentals for their house. Do you? supply the photographer or are they the photographer? So the photographers around the country that create profiles, they're the photographers. So we are the technology provider, just like Facebook. And uh, the better example is like Airbnb and Uber. So like Uber doesn't own any taxes, taxis, yet they're the biggest provider. So an Airbnb doesn't have any hotel rooms. Well, yet at least. And so Stilio, we have no real estate photographers. We are the technology provider and then the individual photographers looking to make a little extra money and become real estate photographers, register and create profiles on the site. That is a great platform. Yeah. Yeah. The, and so we started that at the end of last year and we're in every state. So we were able to scale that across the country very rapidly. And you've named all your companies after Italian guys. Exactly. So yeah. it's kind of, it's kind of I, I love Italy. You're listening to Out to Lunch. I'm Peter Raschuti. I'm talking with Daryl Glade, the founder and CEO of real estate photography company Emoto Photo and photographer and owner of Joshua Lee Studios, Joshua Lee. We'll be right back after this very brief break. Sunday, December 1st, 22-time Grammy Award winner Chick Corea. There's a tacit community of artists who are just trying to improve things. I want to make a record about that. Get unprecedented access to the creative process of one of the most celebrated artists of our time. It's one of the most beautiful social activities that there is, is to create together. Don't miss Chick Corea in the Mind of a Master, exclusively on Scientology Network, DirecTV Channel 320, or online at Scientology.tv. Want gorgeous curls and waves anytime, anywhere? The Unbound Cordless Auto Curler from Conair lets you experience the power and freedom of beauty in motion. Hair goes into the curl chamber, perfect curls and waves come out. No cord to hold you back. Your hair, your way. Unplug and be unbound. Get style that lasts all day, whatever your style may be. There's something for everyone in our new line of Unbound Cordless Hair Tools. Available at Bed Bath & Beyond. It's hosting season, which means it's too many people in the house season. Can I sit on this? Nope. Casserole burning in the oven season. Anyone smell that? <gasps> My yams! And Aunt Meg giving advice season. You should enter eligible New York Lottery draw game tickets with Collect and Win. You could win a $5,000 gift card to use at the Home Depot to make hosting a little easier. Wow, Aunt Meg, that's actually great advice. The Home Depot is not a sponsor of this promotion. You must be 18 years or older to purchase a lottery ticket. You must be 21 or older to purchase a quick drop ticket where alcoholic beverages are served. Please play responsibly. End it by 1720. On the next Kelly Clarkson Show, Josh Gad, Olaf from Frozen 2. Hey, I'm Kelly and I like warm hugs. That's supposed to be my line, but go on. <laughs> and Grace Vanderwall. Happy Thanksgiving. Yes. Plus, can you hear the bells? It's another ambush Christmas. It's presents. I know y'all like presents. <laughs> Holiday Miracle. Are you ready to meet her right now? Sisters meet for the first time. The Kelly Clarkson Show, today at 2 on NBC for New York. Live from State Farm, we have Sharon Flaversham, IT manager, attempting the 47th of her 100 acts of good. Today's good deed, she will attempt to escort a little old lady across the road. Hands held, elbows interlocked. Steady. And they're across. It's on the board. Bravo, Sharon, and bravo to all State Farm employees challenging themselves to get on the board with 100 acts of good. See their stories at neighborhoodofgood.com. What if Santa didn't need eight reindeer to guide him through the night? Hey, Mercedes, map me to Kalamazoo. Okay, mapping the fastest route to Michigan. Or what if his sleigh could get real-time weather info? Hey, Mercedes, what's the temperature on the 25th? 22 degrees. Rooftops may be icy. Mercedes-Benz MBUX technology hasn't made it to flying sleighs, but it's available to you on the A-Class, the GLE, or GLC. And you can get them all for an exceptional price during the Mercedes-Benz winter event. MBUX command simulated. You're listening to Out to Lunch. I'm Peter Raschuti. I'm talking with Daryl Glade, the 
founder and CEO of real estate photography company Emoto Photo and photographer and owner of Joshua Lee Studios, Joshua Lee. Joshua, who are the, the buyers? Are they locals or tourists? Do you have that broken down at all? Yes. Yes, okay. Um, I built the business for locals. Um, I was a post-Katrina event, so people, I, I, I learned early I was more in the memory business than the photography business, and I was helping people reconnect with things that they had lost in the storm, images of things that they may have been lost, and that took, frankly, all the pressure off of being a really great photographer. It just, I just had to be thorough and kind of embrace as many New Orleans things as I could so that I could be relatable again so that the images would be relatable to people. Well, like myself, um, I wasn't born here, and neither, neither were you. Neither was I. How did you, what was the attraction? Um, I got a job. Um, uh, my dad told me, you're either going to pick a career and follow it where it takes you, or you're going to pick a city and figure out how you're going to eat. And I picked a girl, and she picked a city, and I've been trying to figure out how to you know, make a living in New Orleans for 30 years. Now, you had other <laughs> careers before this. I did. What were you doing? I was a... Uh, Ford factory rep. That's how I got here right after college. Moved here sight unseen um, and was here about 10 minutes and realized that I was in deep trouble. <laughs> and then uh, Ford moved me and I didn't move. And then I became a financial advisor for um, about 15 years before Katrina. Um, but I was always in outside sales and my camera was always with me and I was late for appointments. <laughs> I can and see I may this have now. stopped to chase a few squirrels along the way. And there you go. Somebody and then, pulled you aside and said, Joshua, maybe a photography would be the place for you. Nobody said photography. They said working here may not be the place for you. <laughs> but they didn't really. I'm not sure they said photography. No one told me that was a destination. They just told me where I needed to leave. Um, <laughs> oh, the, and and what, one thing I was going to ask you about, Joshua, we have a little right. The, you are actually writing a book with your dogs. Yes. How is that going? And what function do they mainly editing or? Well, they, they're uh, contents. <laughs> it's a book about dogs. It's a book from a dog's point of view. It's really it's sort of merging dogs and photography. It's uh, I live in Bywater, which is very target rich. Um, my dogs live in the moment. They're not burdened with uh, schedules and yesterday. So you have a lot and in common. What the, well, it's not so much. Well, <laughs> yes, but. You can learn a lot from your dog. Their life's much simpler, and they're much happier than most of us. And there's something to be said for you know we could learn from them perhaps I think so. instead of trying to impart all our great wisdom on them. I think the photos would be taken lower to the ground. Too. Well, they each be... get their own chapter. So I've got a Yorkie, and I just rest the camera on the ground for him. And I've got a Schnauzer, and I built a little stick with a bracket so that when he's on something, I can just drop my lens in the bracket and shoot oh. from his point of view. That one's going to go. We'll see. It's, I don't uh, know how to write. I, I, I haven't written a book. We're going to find out. Bookstores and veterinarians would be selling that. That would be I, terrific. I, I, you know, as usual, I really don't care about that. There's a story that I got to chase. <laughs> and it's the same with the pictures. I don't think about, I, I don't think about the, I'm the audience. The curating is to figure out if anybody else cares. But when I shoot, it's Do for me. Do you care me. about that last part? Eventually, but not while I'm shooting. I mean, when I'm shooting, I'm shooting. you promised your dad you were going to make a living, so I'm just checking. Oh, no, I didn't. Oh, he didn't? No, I'm he sorry. He required that I that make a living. That was what it was. I didn't <laughs> promise him anything. I told him I would try my best. <laughs> Daryl Joshua, this is the part of the show we call another great idea. Maybe you've got a friend like this, someone who's always got a great idea for you. They tell you about this job you should apply for, or that guy you should have a cup of coffee with, or a great investment opportunity you should jump on. Now, you can take advice like this, and it turns out to be a disaster. You can, it, you can dismiss this advice and miss out on something that may have turned out really great, or you can take your friend's advice, and it turns out to be the best thing that ever happened to you. Do you have an example in your life or career of a friend who had a great idea for you? Did you take their advice and, and how did it turn out? I'll, I'll start with Daryl. You know, owning a small business, a lot of people try to give you advice uh, because they certainly know better than you. But I actually did get a very good bit of advice uh, when we were in the Idea Village program. And the advice was to set up a board of advisors for your company. And I said, sure, that sounds great. And just sort of ignored it. And then I was asked again by the same person if we were going to do this. And so I Googled it to figure out what it was. And it turns out... It's like a board of directors, except you don't answer to them. 
They're okay. only there to help you. And they're not fiduciaries. They're, exactly. Yep. And so you can you choose the right board of directors or advisors or single advisor, and you can go and ask that person anything you want, and you don't need to feel like you need to have all the answers. And you can really rely on them for advice. And, you know, if you're running a company, oftentimes, like in this interview, you have to feel like you have all the answers. Uh, there you don't. You could say what's troubling you, what's keeping you up at night, and hopefully if you choose the right one, you can get some solid advice. And do you use them as a, like a sounding board for new ideas? That would be one of the... We lucked out and we got a pretty serious uh, board of advisors who have got some pretty big experience. So we really just meet with them every other week and say this is what we're working on and they can give us some anecdotes and what they've done in their careers or they could they identify from, potential pitfalls, that type of thing. Are they from different walks of life or different industries? Uh, yeah, well, we, we currently have two, and one is uh, just an expert on general business and growing companies. He grew a company to international uh, size with billion-dollar sale, and so he can help us with growing into new markets. And then we also have a tech advisor. I am not a tech founder, yet we seem to do a lot of tech. And so our tech advisor has a background in doing all that, so we can ask this person questions and help guide us through the process. What do you think more... Uh, small businesses should put together a team like that? I think everyone should consider it. Okay. Uh, choosing the right one is pretty important uh, because you could be getting bad advice and perhaps somebody that really doesn't have your best interest. But if you can find the right one, it's it's great. Just curious, do you pay them or just buy them coffee? Or uh, You could schedule it either way, but we really knew we needed them to do some heavy lifting for us. So they got advisor shares as part of the company. It's funny, I only get iced coffee. It's, it's kind of a kind of odd. Joshua, what about yourself? Plastics. <laughs> the graduate. I'm just saying. <laughs> what advice did you get? We, we, we realized you got some family advice, but you didn't necessarily take it. So. No, I, I did, actually. Um, I, he didn't tell me which way to go. He just told me what the options were. Um, he also told me that it's easier to go from a large company to a small one than from a small company to a large one. And um, I worked for some very large companies. And honestly, the only reason I've been able to survive 12 years being an artist is because of the time I spent in a large structure that was crafted and built by other professionals with other disciplines. And Henry Ford. Henry Ford. Well, but just still, and I was in sales for 20 years. So, you know, every 30 days, toes on the line, force ranked by your peers with published results. It, it sort of, it changes... So there was some... it's, it, 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 it created accountability that wouldn't poss that is easily overlooked in the artist world. So <laughs> when you think about it, you decided that that wasn't for you, but you took a lot of the skills from it. Well, I'm doing stuff you don't like for people you don't respect for decades is really good for <laughs> skill building <laughs> <laughs> and character development. Yes. It just. It's, I couldn't, I would, I'm so much happier that I did that for 20 years and then became an artist than attempted being an artist and then resigned myself to being a corporate guy. That is. It's, it's nice to finally have the right things wrong with me. This is much better. <laughs> well, lack of anything, good chronology. I think you did, uh, did them in the right order. I need, I need to interrupt. I though. got lucky. What? I've spoken to Joshua uh, in the years past and talked to him about business, and I, he's underselling what he does. He really runs a pretty solid business. Uh, and what he does is very strategic. I know he's really funny, uh, but he's there's a reason why at our, these art markets, his booth is flooded with people and you can barely get in. And he, there's a, a lot of strategy that he uses to get those sales. Wow, so well, in all due respect, the, one of the ideas that I probably wish I had taken up on was real estate photography. <laughs> so <laughs> I had to tell you that at some point during lunch today. And your dad was one of the ones who suggested it, I think. I'm just kidding. Uh, come on, Dad. <laughs> yeah. No, but I mean, Creating it was competition? when you know, you're beginning to learn how I'm trying to figure out how to be a photographer. I didn't know what I was doing. I was an insurance agent when I evacuated. So I'm trying to figure out what, how do you, I don't know what, I, I'm a memory salesman. I'll go back to that. So, but Memory how do you sales. sustain yourself as a photographer? Well, it's products or portraits or somebody that wants to hire you for their pictures. As a recovering insurance agent, I like the idea of being inspired once and getting paid multiple times. And you're a recovering attorney, so everything's really working out right. here. They, Perfect. Uh, I'm glad you pointed that out, though, that he's, he's secretly a, a great businessman. <laughs> Shh, don't tell, don't tell the children. 
It's worth remembering that the iPhone came out in 2007 and Instagram was launched in 2010. It's not impossible to imagine that our current obsession with taking and posting photos is a fad that will die out. And if that happens, we'll return the role of photographer to the professionals. Till then, real photographers like you, Joshua, and your teams of photographers, Daryl, will continue to create photographic commerce and art. And the rest of us will keep posting our selfies and photos of our cheeseburgers. <laughs> <laughs> Joshua and Daryl. It's been great to meet you. Thank you both for taking the time to join me today on Out to Lunch. Thank you. <laughs> My guests on Out to Lunch today have been Daryl Glade. He's the CEO and founder of Emoto Photo and photographer Joshua Lee, owner of Joshua Lee Studios. You can find out more about Daryl and Joshua's photography by following the links on our website, itsneworleans.com. The producer of our show is Grant Morris. Our technical producer is Eric Merle. Our researcher is Maggie Mendel. You can listen to the show and to past episodes of Out to Lunch wherever you get podcasts and at itsneworleans.com. If you want to know what we look like, and these, these guys are photographers, uh, you can find photos from this show on itsneworleans.com and It's New Orleans' Facebook page. These photos were taken today by our photographer, Allison Moon. Out to Lunch is a production of INO Broadcasting for itsneworleans.com and WWNO 89.9. FM. I'm Peter Raschuti. Thanks for joining me. I look forward to meeting you again next week around the table here at Commander's Palace for more business, New Orleans style, on Out to Lunch. Out to Lunch is recorded live over lunch at Commander's Palace in New Orleans. Commander's Palace serves lunch Monday to Friday, jazz brunch on Saturday and Sunday with live music, and dinner seven nights a week. Mitchell Foreman wrote and performs all the music on Out to Lunch. You can hear Mitchell's music anywhere great jazz is sold or streamed and at MitchellForeman.com. Major support for Out to Lunch is provided by the law firm of Jones Walker, established in 1937 with over 375 attorneys in offices throughout the U.S., providing a comprehensive range of services to a local, national, and international client base. JonesWalker.com. And by Shorten Associates, legal recruiters in Louisiana and Texas. And by Basics Swim and Gym and Basics Underneath Fine Lingerie, the It's New Orleans Happy Hour podcast. And by Orange Theory Fitness, delivering fitness results for a healthier world. Supposed to be my line, but go no. on. And Grace Vanderwall. Happy Thanksgiving. Yes. Plus, can you hear the bells? It's another Amber's Christmas. It's presents. I know y'all like presents. And a holiday miracle. Are you ready to meet her right now? Sisters meet for the first time. The Kelly Clarkson Show, today at 2 on NBC for New York.